Much of the world has condemned Russia's attack on Ukraine with the threat of severe sanctions. Former New Zealand Prime Minister and Head of the United Nations Development Programme, Helen Clark, is with me now this morning. Helen, good morning to you. Good morning. What's your assessment of what's happening? What's Putin playing at? What does he want, Helen? Well, he, he wants Ukraine to be a compliant state on Russia's border. He, he doesn't want it uh, seeking a, a destiny with the European Union, but certainly doesn't want it in NATO, which, by the way, wasn't on offer to uh, Ukraine anyway. But he's manufactured all these excuses as to why he needed to go in, which are really not holding any water with, with, with anyone except to those who, who follow him uh, closely. So he, he could go all the way to try to occupy the country. Of course, he said yesterday or the day before, we're not going to occupy Ukraine, but just about everything else that Russia has said has proved to be incorrect. Uh, so it could be full occupation. He could, uh, of course, uh, carry on with, with what he's doing, which is to destroy their, their military hardware, their, their planes, their, their airport infrastructure. He'll grab the ports and deny Ukraine to the sea. So you can see how he could really you know, trap in uh, the Ukrainian government in Kiev. But the news that we're hearing, including on your reports this morning, are showing some pretty worrying uh, news from around Kiev itself with the fighting over the airport. Uh, Chernobyl take it up, up the way. Uh, I've been to Chernobyl from Kiev. It's actually not, not that far and Kiev is close to the Russian border. One point that struck me reading the analyses last night was that Russia will seek to cut off the bulk of the Ukrainian army, which is on the eastern line of conflict with the separatists, cut it off from the rest of the country. So unless that army were to strategically retreat quite quickly, uh, it, it would not be able to mount a, a defensive of Kiev and, and other major centres. Yeah, so as you say, these very, very worrying developments. Um, are you of the mind, because there seems to be two camps with those who, are, who analyse this stuff, either he's gone mad and he's surrounded by a small group of yes-men and this is just, you know, um, a, a lunatic move, or he's very serious, he's getting good advice, and he wants to uh, expand, you know, this is Russian uh, expansionism. I think he's very serious. If he's getting any advice, it's very bad advice. It's hard to see how any professional foreign ministry, for example, could uh, advocate for the course of action that he's taken. We've seen him dig in more and more over the years on his view that the greatest tragedy of the 20th century was the demise of the Soviet Union. Mm. And in a sense, he's trying to re recreate that. He has Belarus now in, in, in his pocket for various uh, reasons. If he can control Ukraine, one then worries about Moldova, which is just to the south of Ukraine, a big slice of whose territory was snatched by the Soviet Union with one of these independent, quote-unquote, statelets at the time of, of the end of the Soviet Union. You've had the two snatches of Georgian territory, of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, going back you know, some 15 or more, more years. So, so there's sort of a, a game plan here. And, and this is, without doubt, the, the boldest and most yeah. ruthless of, of these moves to recreate the old order. Yeah, absolutely, which seems to, be, seems to be the plan. And then the question is, what do we do about it, right? And we have uh, announced some low-level moves. When you compare us to the United States and the UK, who are imposing very strong sanctions, uh, the National Party has come out and said that we need to change our law in New Zealand so that we can unilaterally impose direct sanctions on Russia and join our big boy allies in doing that. Do you think we should? Well, New Zealand's position traditionally has been that it will follow uh, the United Nations on uh, broader sanctions, economic sanctions. So we, we've obviously applied to senior officials and you know, done the sorts of things permitted within New Zealand law. Uh, I haven't taken a particular view on it. The law hasn't changed since I was there. I think for New Zealand as a, as a small country, uh, staying close to the multilateral system is, is always a, a good uh, thing to do, although it will be somewhat paralysed over, over this. Obviously, you have the irony of this invasion happening while Russia is chairing the Security Council. <laughs> There's some pretty bizarre scenes from there in the last uh, couple, of, couple of days. I know there is an opposition member's bill uh, on this, and mm. you know, the, the 
course, public debate is, is, is always good as to the options. But I think New Zealand should make up its own mind about uh, what it does. No one is under any illusion that New Zealand, what New Zealand thinks about this. New Zealand is abhorred by it uh, because we respect the democracy, we respect people's right to choose uh, their, their sovereignty. And this, this is just an appalling, shocking step backwards we're seeing play out in, in Eastern Europe. Helen, we've got about 15 seconds. I don't know if he's watching, but what's your message to President Putin this morning? Pretty much like that to the protest that's in front of Parliament. Go home. That is Helen Clark, former Prime Minister of New Zealand and head of the UNDP.